Hello everyone and welcome to Chasm Converses. I just released my 20th episode with my 20th guest, which happened to be Aliki Katryu, vocal coach and front woman of Eight Lives Down, and that's available for you to hear right now. But for this episode, I thought I'd do a reflection and a recap on the 20 episodes that I've done so far and share some behind the scenes stories about some of them and also some that were really important to me and some that really reminded me, uh, you know, that I'm doing something that I enjoy. And so there's a lot to get through. So let's launch straight into this. Yeah, let's get straight into it. Episode one, Life in the Castle with Sam Upton. This was the trial run of the podcast. I come up with this podcast idea a couple of years before I even started to do it. Um, back when myself and Travis started working together and writing songs for our band Kazarin. Um, and like many musicians, when you uh, write songs and you release songs, there's always that gap in between releases of, you know, recording songs and having things ready. And it sometimes take a long time until anything's ready to go. And there's just a whole lot of time when nothing's going on. So I was looking for ideas and ways to fill that gap with extra content. And so I came up with the idea of doing a podcast um, and talking to some people within the Adelaide music scene that I hadn't, um, you know, learned too much about. I'd worked with them and, and played shows and stuff with them and been on the same bills as their bands and that sort of thing. But I had never really um, gone in depth and asked them about what they did and, and learnt about their musical journeys. And so I thought it would be a great idea to do that. At the time, we were we only really had just started off, and so we thought maybe oh, it, would, it could be something that we could do a bit more down the line once we got our first EP out and got a few things out a bit and uh, out and ready. And then, so when Chasm, this solo project, came along, which um, Sam was very much influential for, um, we recorded a song together called Fractured, and then we decided to release it under separate aliases, and so that gave me the opportunity to release that song under a name of my own, which happened to be Chasm. And then the podcast idea came back and it sort of, it reiterated to me, hey, now that you've got your own alias, this can be a platform for you to release songs of a kind, different songs that you want to do. It can be an alias, a, a platform for a lot of different things. And it could be a platform for that podcast that you were thinking about doing, talking to people and, you know, learning about them and finding out about themselves. And so I thought, okay, well, let's just, let's do this. And at the time I had um, just decided that I was going to go to London and go and live there. And so my brain sort of said, well, if you're going to do it, you got to do it now because we're going in a few months. So you've got a little bit of time to, to get some episodes going and see if this is actually going to work. So this first episode, Live at the Castle with Sam, was that trial run. I called him up and I said, hey, man, I've got this idea for this podcast. Do you mind if I do the first episode with you, see if it works? And, and uh, yeah, just see if this is actually something that I can do with the minimal amount of gear that I have. And, of course, he was like, yeah, absolutely. So we got into it and we did it down, We did it uh, at his house in the castle downstairs in uh, the practice room where a lot of our practices for Paper Sunsets and Oceans have taken place over the years. So it was really nice to kind of do that there. That room's been the start of quite a few projects and... It was the kickoff point to the start of this project. So there's a lot of uh, musical history in the Upton household. And it was quite fun because this was a day where there was actually quite a bit of gear around in that room because I think there were some shows and some um, gigs uh, planned. So I was on uh, the couch and next to me, I think, was a massive, was a few guitar cases and all that sort of thing. Sam was on an esky, a little esky sitting there just in front of me. Uh, my laptop was on a high chair like a bar high chair uh, diagonally from us. And uh, this little microphone was on a hard case in the middle of us. And so for some reason in a room that was so big, we were cramped. Um, but that's where the first episode came from. And it was so fun to do it. And once we did it and I put it back through the software and saw how it all went, we realized and I realized that, cool, this is something that I can do. So that was the kickoff point. That's it. Episode two. Edmonton and some thoughts on cover bands with Lukey Shaw. Um, it was actually, uh, I was actually quite nervous with this episode because I hadn't really conversed with Lukey before. We had been on tour uh, about a year before this with his band at the time, No X5, uh, Paper Sunsets, obviously, and um, Down and Out and Larson, which was an awesome tour. We went to, we went to Port Lincoln, we went to Wyala. And yeah, we drove in these vans. It was it was really fun. It was our first kind of like country tour with other bands, and it was awesome. Lots of lots of cool uh, little moments, and um, 
we made it very fun for each other. Um, but yeah, so I had uh, a lot of time on that tour. There were a few people that we knew and there were a few people that we didn't know. And Lukey was someone who I didn't know. And uh, we conversed a few times here and there, but we didn't really get into a full length conversation about too much. But then my main uh, reason for getting wanting to talk to him was the stuff that he was doing with Edmonton, which was his band after No X5 because I was really impressed with a lot of the content he was putting out, the songs that were coming out as well. And so going to his house and uh, going to have a conversation with him that had to last, you know, obviously 30 minutes was, it was a bit intimidating because I didn't know exactly how it was going to go, but it was brilliant. My, my fears were all in void because we got there, we talked for like 15 minutes before the podcast had even started. And then when the podcast did start, you know, we had the tequila beer, which was fun, Desperados. And it was, yeah, it got the, it was a 36 or so minute podcast. And then after we finished, we went out the back and we talked for like another 25 minutes. So it was just, it was awesome. It was a really great environment. And it was, a, it was, it really showed me that, you know, if I take an interest in what someone does, then I, I really can, um, you know, talk to them at length about that one thing, even if I don't know the person very well. So that was a really good learning, learning growth for me, myself. Episode number three, delving into gods and slapping knees with Lionsmith. This was a very fun, very fun episode um, with Amelia, aka Lionsmith. This was actually, there's a few episodes in this little gap here that were moved around because this was actually the sixth episode that I had, uh, had done. And I decided to release it uh, a little bit earlier because Amelia had a song coming out that we wanted to to line it up with. So I decided that I would put it out a little bit earlier than what it was in, originally intended to do. But this was a really fun conversation. We were in uh, Wondenberg Studios in Adelaide. It was on uh, West Everton Road, which is where I used to basically live. I live five minutes away. And we got into a situation where um, yeah, Amelia would go in and record some of her songs with her engineer, Matt Zepito, who also does, uh, does bass, uh, live for Kazarin. We had, it was cool cause we, we had about, uh, maybe two or so sessions where we'd go in, we'd just hang out with her while she did her, while she did her songs and, uh, you know, we'd, uh, give her some pointers, we'd tell her if it was good, we'd help her out. And it was, it was a really cool, a really fun environment, um, to record and to be in that spot with somebody. But that was a really great conversation because that went into all different directions and, um, it was really, really fun. Episode four, Lost in Purgatory with Hjalmar. Ain't other strange. This was really cool because he went to his, uh, work at the time, which was in Untethered, the VR place. And so we actually did the conversation in the big room, hence why it's pretty echoey in this episode. It's a bit echoey. One of the great things about this episode was that after we finished, we actually did some we actually did some VR. Um, we hooked up to this to the VR system, and I'd never done any VR things like the real like you know when you're you're standing in the square and you're walking around with all the staff. And I'd, I'd never done that. I'd done like you know I'd put the headset on at a friend's house and sort of saw the TV and hurt my eyes. But besides that. This was the first time I actually did VR. So that was really cool that we were able to do the VR after we did the podcast, which was, yeah, a lot of fun. Episode five, finishing things with Jack Hartley. This was really cool because this was done in a, in a space where I was recording with Jack uh, once a week, every week for about six weeks. It was, I was doing a lot. There was, I basically I did an entire EP for Chasm. That is uh, still has, which is still in the bank. Um, I was also overseeing drums for Kazarin, and then we were also doing Fractured, myself and Sam, and we were also doing another project that I don't think is been announced just yet, but it will be announced in in due time, and you will see it in all its glory. But we were also doing that as well. So in the middle of all these recording dates and stuff, one of the days I decided that I would ask Jack if he wanted to do a podcast because. Most times before we ever started to record anything or do anything for the day, we'd always have a conversation to kick the day off. And they always were great conversations and they always went for quite a while. So we thought we'd do it. We'd turn one into a podcast episode. And this one was one of those conversations. And Jack's a really easy person to talk to. So it made it just that much better. Gaming and music with Hank Plagimars, episode number six. This is a, this is a bit of a fun one because this one is actually. This was actually episode 16. So this was actually the last episode that I recorded in Adelaide, but I fast-tracked it, uh, fast-tracked it for Hank because uh, he recently became a member of a new band called Dear Is Helpless and they had their first single coming out. And so I thought that I would line up this episode with their first single so it allowed them to have a bit of extra content to put out. And um, 
reflect on for their first single. So um, that one was fast tracked, but it was a really cool, a really nice episode. And I was a bit, and by that time, 16 episodes in, I was so much more relaxed and comfortable talking to my guests and stuff. And, and that was cool because we were just at his house, literally sitting on the couch. And it was just like we were just reflecting and just going back through his musical journey and how we both kind of influenced each other through our different bands and, and all that sort of thing. And it was like, yeah, it was a really cool um, a really cool conversation. And the really cool thing is that right now um, his band, Dearest Helpless, actually has their EP out. So um, Chapters of Renewal, which only came out maybe about a few weeks ago. So it's so cool reflecting on, you know, this podcast episode. And that lined up with his first single. And now they've got a whole EP out. So it's awesome how time can flow and things can come out. Episode 7, Making Friends Through the Lens with Josh McCauley. This was a cool episode because we were in Josh's uh, uh, studio where he does all of his photo work and all his video work and and everything like that. And over the over quite a few years, I've been in that studio a lot, <laughs> quite a lot. Uh, he's taken photos of me for Paper Sunsets, for wrestling, uh, my old my old wrestling persona, Kazarin Crow, um, uh, Kazarin as well, and also Kazim. So I've been in there quite a few times and the fact that we were able to sit down in that same studio and have a, a podcast episode and a reflection on his musical uh, life and his photo life as well as the cool times that we've had together was, was really nice and, and really it was a, it was a really uh, wholesome conversation which I really enjoyed. Episode number eight, Pro Wrestling and Bands with Robbie Hart. This was awesome because Robbie Hart... Um, was a big influence to me when I very first started wrestling at Wrestle Rampage because he was a guy covered in tattoos. He was in a band as well as being a wrestler, and that is all that I ever wanted to do with my life was be in a was be in a metal band and be a wrestler. Same as Chris Jericho, band wrestler, and so Robbie was the guy that I looked up to quite a lot because he was doing the things that I also really wanted to do. So to be able to actually sit down with him and talk to him a lot about his his work with bands and his work in wrestling was really awesome. And the fact that we were actually able to do it because we had some issues trying to find a place to do it because I, I wasn't able at the time to do, to really um, coordinate podcast episodes from my house because I was living with my parents um, and Robbie lives um, in the country. So we were actually able to find a middle ground and we did it in the Wrestle Rampage Dojo in one of the office rooms, which was brilliant. It was great that we were able to do it in in that space where, you know, the both of us have trained relentlessly over the years um, and, you know, even performed shows in that very room. So, um, no, nah, that was an absolutely one. That was a really great podcast. That was a real bucket list tick off the list of someone I wanted to have on the podcast and talk to. So that was wonderful. Episode nine, Bands, Banter and Loki with Benjamin Betty. This was a really wholesome chat with my friend Ben. We had some uh, vodka Pepsis. I don't really drink, I don't really drink Pepsi, but on this on this day I did, and uh, yeah, we just talked about his band, um, the fact that he's in a band now because there was a time where a lot of us uh, we, we're all in a big friendship group together, and uh, a lot of us have been in bands over the years, and Ben sort of was the guy who always wanted to get into a band and had 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 some difficulty in doing it, um, and now finally he is in a band called Sawfish Trombone, and they're playing heaps of shows and releasing music and stuff, so it's it's wonderful to see that he's. He's finally doing it. He's, he's doing it. Um, but yeah, we talk a lot about that and about um, achieving his black belt in Taekwondo. And then his cat came into the room and, and terrorized the, the set a bit. But it, it, was a, it was a really fun conversation. I enjoyed it. Uh, episode 10, Into the Music World with Mads Winter. This was uh, so nice. Um, I went to Mads' house. Um, and once we got all the animals out of the room, uh, the bird, for one, <laughs> it was making lots of noise. Apparently that bird is massive now. It was only very, very small when I was last there. Um, but no, we had a really cool conversation. Mads has been one of my longest friends since high school. She had her dog Indy by her side the whole time. So, um, she made her presence known a few times in the episode. Um, and then we just had some beers, had some wine, had some dinner and it was just, yeah, it was a really relaxing, really nice conversation to have with a friend and, and that was a really cool episode that I enjoyed. Episode 11, Dropping the Sky Hammer with Matt Cepetto. This one we did in Wonderbergs as well. Um, as I said earlier, um, Matt's a sound engineer who worked with um, Lionsmith and also plays bass live for Kazrin, also in his own band Sky Hammer. And um, yeah, he's, uh, it was wonderful because we, we were just in a studio 
upstairs. So it was just me and him in a studio room. So this is probably one of the best sounding podcast episodes, I think. Um, and yeah, Nat was awesome to talk to. He's got a, a lot of the same interests as myself with the heavy music and the pro wrestling, especially kind of like the, the classic 2000s wrestling and that sort of thing. So we, um, yeah, had just like a really great conversation about all that sort of stuff and, uh, that sometimes there's no better episode to have than to talk with someone who just knows and has a lot of the same interests as you. So it was, it was really cool. Episode 12, Coffees and Snags, Drums and Video Games with Rory and Moy. Uh, this was uh, really fun because yeah, Rory and I, we have long conversations often. Um, if we, if I ever go to his, if I go to his house, which um, over the last couple of years has been a bit regularly, if it was just to go out to Glenelg for dinner or go do a Wim Hof session or go to the beach or something, we would always start off with just maybe having a beer on the deck or having an Italian coffee as we did, as we did on this day. Um, but we'd always always start off with a conversation and these conversations would go for 30 minutes easily, sometimes even longer. But he's one of these people who is just really good at conversations. Like you can just go into a conversation with Rory and you just don't know what – you don't know what you're going to talk about. You really, you really can't pick it. And so having this conversation was great with him because I knew straight up that when I went in there, sometimes with guests, um, I'll have a book. Well, I'll write down some things, I'll do some research, I'll ask them questions and whatever. With Rory, I didn't have the book because I knew that I didn't need it. I knew that I could just go straight in there, start talking to him about something. And as it does in this episode, it goes for 15 minutes because we just kept going and kept going and kept going and just hit so many different topics. Like I think we talk about like sausages, like adult, like Cole's sausages for some in in this in this podcast, which makes no sense to me, but it's just sometimes how it rolls. Um, but no, that was it was a brilliant, it was a wonderful conversation. Episode thirteen, the Q and A with Chasm. This was cool. This was just uh, questions and answers um, podcast that I did. I'd been living in London for almost two months at this point, and so yeah, some of the some of you guys just sent me some questions and I answered them in just uh, in an episode. And that was a great, that was, that was great. Just a bit of a, a bit of a reflection on those questions and that sort of thing. But I, I really enjoyed that. Episode 14, creating visual and musical art with Falter. So after I finished with Rory, I went straight to do this podcast with Falter. And it was cool because he actually lives in the same suburb as my parents in Aberfoyle Park. And I never knew anybody who was into metal into visual art and painting and like, you know, heavy vocals or anything like that really um, besides probably Lachlan Odell um, who lived in the Aberfoyle Park area. And the fact that Falta lives literally about a five minute walk from my house and I never knew this until recently was just so great to see. I mean, if I had known this years ago, we probably would be absolute best friends. But he's, he's, it was a great conversation that I had with him. He's, we've got a lot of the same interests um, with Korn and a lot of the classic 2000s metalcore. And his project is amazing that he's got. He's actually got a new video coming out soon for his song No More Tears, which I think they've dropped two teasers for them and they're really great. So I can't wait um, for that as well. And he's also someone that I would love to work with in the future as well. So that was a really great episode. I definitely would, um, would, uh, prescribe listening to that episode. And also he had a really cool chair that I sat in as well that I think he got from Lachlan Odell as well. I don't know if I've asked Lachlan this yet, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to message him after this and ask him anyway, episode 15, beer boys with Samuel Burns and Michael Tulett, the spinny sock no- knocker offer. <laughs> Oh, so many, so many potential names for this episode came out during this episode, like during this podcast. This was the first three guest podcast. So I had like my, as in myself and two other guests in the same room talking with the same mic, but it was great because we had, um, uh, we were in Sam, in one of Sam's rooms. You had the lighting, like all changing color. Um, and it was just a really nice environment. We actually had one of their beers at the time, but we were, trying i think it was a brown ale or a red ale but it was a different color but it was uh it was still very tasty but it was uh in the experimental phase um and it was awesome because those two are my some of my best mates i mean i'm going back to adelaide in march for sam's wedding so i'll get to see them again which will be great it'll be the reunion of the beer boys um but it was really great and one of the really cool things i love about reflecting on this podcast now is that they recently did a new brew um I think it was a New England IPA and obviously I haven't tried it because I can't try it over here, but 
it looks amazing and they have told me that it, t- it tastes brilliant and it looks just like a beer that you would buy at a shop or at a bar like you know you just it looks like a beer that you just get at a bar and it was so cool because I was like yes like you know this podcast episode we had one that was like it was still experimenting and now you know a couple of months later you've got one which is looking amazing so it just shows the progression and I'm so proud of those boys so this is a really cool episode to listen to this we actually did a second episode together um as well so there may be more to come from the beer boys but uh, we'll see how that goes down the line episode 16 reflecting and laughing with Toshari Glenn um, this was uh, really cool, this conversation, because we did it in Tosh's apartment in the city. And this was actually, um, this was the first time that we had um, seen each other and conversed after the last Paper Sunset show, um, which was, yeah, really cool because it, it, it felt a little bit like, uh, as Tosh says in the, in, the, in the podcast, he feels like the, the podcast started as soon as I walked in the room. And I completely agree with that because... Tosh is one of those people that not only has to be my friend for a very, very long time, since high school. Um, I've been in a band with him for nine and a half years, but I've also actually lived with him. We've lived together. So we I think we do have a very special bond, which is which is pretty much just like brothers, in my opinion. Um, but we have the awesome conversations. Whenever I have a conversation with Tosh, I feel like I have walked away learning something about him and also about myself and also I always walk away laughing a lot because he's just a very a very funny person with a very addictive personality um but I felt like this was this was there was a lot of paper sunsets in this conversation I felt like it was a bit of a conclusion conversation because I don't think we really got to have that when we finished show when we used to finish shows we'd always have like a bit of a recap of the show or a bit of a chat about the show I don't really think we kind of got that that night because it was all just such a blur of packing everything away and people coming up to us and and us trying to enjoy our last night but I felt like this was a lot of the the conclusion convo of um our work together as as musicians um and obviously I would love to do more work with Tosh in the future but it was it was still a really nice conversation as I said it spans it spans about 40 minutes so you know what's good you know it's a good one and we got dinner afterwards in Adelaide so that was really that was really fun as well episode number 17 becoming versatile with Dash a Day. This was my first podcast in London, uh, doing it online. So, and it was really cool because I, this was one of those podcasts that I didn't expect that I would ever have, uh, ever do. It was someone that I never thought I would do it with. So, um, I saw Dasha. So when I came over, um, you know, how the old algorithms on the Instagrams work. Um, she had just come to London. She was on holiday here. And I think she put up something on her. She did a lot of her Snapchat, a lot of her Instagram stories and that sort of stuff. And because I had the tag London on my um, Instagram, when you go to your search bar, a lot of that stuff pops up of things that you might like. And one of the things was her in Hyde Park, I think it was. And so I saw that and I was like, wow, this girl's beautiful. But also like, wow, that's what Hyde Park is like. And then, yeah, saw that she was a musician, listened to some of her songs. She's very... Um, open and welcoming to, you know, her social stories and that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, we just had a bit of a chat online and did some voice recordings and stuff back and forth. And then, yeah, just we ended up doing a podcast. And it was really cool because it was her first podcast in English, which was quite momentous. And, yeah, it, it went really, really well. So I was really happy having that conversation with her and because, obviously, she'd just been over here. It was cool talking about we were almost both tourists in that respect. So um, it was a really cool conversation. Episode 18, Bring It to Music and Life with Mish Sharma. This was fun because Mish, just recently Mish had gone to Knotfest, so I was able to ask her about how Knotfest was and seeing Spirit Box and all those kind of bands like Slipknot and Parkway and stuff. And it sounded awesome, but I met Mish. Um, she was part of the PR. She uh, helped me in the uh, press publicity um, world when we released Kazrin's Lost to Monster Living. So I was in conversation with her and another lady called Monique Pym, from Relica and it was really cool because we did the campaign together it got a lot of positive outlook which was great um but obviously it was all it was all very much work so it was really great to actually talk to Mish about herself and her band and what she does and her musical journey and that was really great because I got to learn a lot of things about her that I obviously didn't know before and that uh, essentially that's what this podcast is it's me learning things about people and giving them a platform to let their stories out and 
tell people tell the world and tell people what they what they've been doing in their musical life and that sort of thing and sometimes it's great to reflect on that sort of thing because then you can sort of see like wow yeah I've actually done quite a lot in my musical life or a lot in my creative life for that much to say so it was a really a really a really fun episode to do episode 19 with Sandy Hill big romance comedy theory the this was actually the podcast with the most issues because I did it on a day where the internet was absolutely terrible. Um, here, where I'm living, one of my, my, my great aunt was on a Skype call with about eight other people doing a painting class, and I was trying to do one podcast conversation with Connor upstairs. And so we, I don't know how many exactly, but I think we had at least six dropouts. So the fact that Connor was able to hang on and, and stick with me the whole time through all the issues was great. And the fact that we got 28 minutes out of it was actually great just awesome because i thought as i was trying to fix all the issues oh man this is going to go for like 15 minutes this is not going to like be good but it, it was it took the longest to edit that is for sure but i'm happy that it came out the, the uh the way that it did so that was really really cool and now we get to number 20 with Aliki. so this was very momentous for me because this was the first podcast episode where I had met somebody and talked to them for the very first time through a podcast episode. And that was very, uh, quite intimidating. Um, you, you know, like, especially it's weird, with online stuff, you, whenever the Skype comes up and the, and the person's about to connect or whatever, you do get a sense of real nerves that creep in and you kind of like, oh, oh God, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like that, that doubt, that real self-doubt creeps in. And this was all at all-time high when I did it with Aliki because I was nervous. I was like, I hope this goes well because I don't know anything about her besides what I've researched. But this turned out to be one of the best episodes that um, I have done and one of my most favorite because we just we clicked so well and vibed so well. And I go back and listen to it. It's awesome. And yeah, it was just so great to talk to her about vocal work and the coaching that she does I, i've been i do i i'm obviously a screamer in kazrin so we had that in uh in um in common to talk about and um i did a lot of i did quite a few of her classes on youtube um where she shows you how to do your vocals well and shows you false scores and fries and different techniques and all that sort of stuff i just hit the mic but even so it was really great to do it and uh yeah i, I really sort of um all I did was ask if she wanted to be on it. And she said, yes. And that was brilliant to me because sometimes all you got to do is just ask um, because you don't know what the answer is until you ask. And it can be hard to ask. It can, it can really be hard to ask. But one of the things about being over here by myself in London is that I'm getting better at asking because I don't really have anybody here um, within my parameters um, besides my work colleagues and the people that I live with that I can really sort of, you know, um, communicate with or all that sort of stuff. So asking people is something that I'm getting really good at. And with this podcast, especially when it comes to online and researching people and that sort of thing, it, it's been so great that, you know, I've been able to do all these episodes with all of these people so far. And hell, that means I've got, you know, another 20 to go until I get to number 40. And then I'll probably do another one of these once I get to 40. And we'll see how, how all of that goes. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this reflection and recap on the first 20 episodes of uh, Chasm Converses. Feel free to leave a rating, review, and uh, join me next week for a new episode with a brand new guest. I've done the podcast already. It's in the, it's in the bank. It's ready to be released. So I'll see you then. 